All right, what's up everyone? Professor Wolverine here, and today I'm going to be teaching you about one of the most important theorems you will ever learn. The fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamentals of business. The fundamentals of business. Mental is a part of the word. I have underlined it. Because you're mental if you don't have a good time. The fun is in it. Get out. I know, I know. Thanks, Toby. All right, so what is it? What is it good for? What it is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Get out. All right, now that there are no troublemakers left, let me say what it is. So first I'll say it in words, and then I'll write it down. So there are two parts to the fundamental theorem calculus. The first part is sometimes called the construction theorem. Also, this is confusing, but sometimes people call the first part the second part, and the second part the first part. So I'm going to be clear about what I consider to be the first part and the second part. It agrees with what is on Wikipedia. Okay, so the first part is all about telling you how to construct an antiderivative of a function. So if I give you a function, f, and I want to know, does it have an antiderivative? The first fundamental theorem of calculus, sometimes called the construction theorem, tells you that if your function is continuous, you can always do it. Let me write it down. So remember, fun, fun, fun. It's fun, it's a lot of fun. You should be like having a blast right now. You should be, you should be having a party. Well, unfortunately, pandemic. You should be having a Zoom party and all you should be doing is talking about fundamental theorem calculus. That's how much fun it is. Yeah, all right, now for the first, whoa, what the <laughs> Okay, I don't have time for this. All right, so the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, otherwise known as the construction theorem, should be constructing something. Well, it's going to construct antiderivatives. So let's look at it. So construction theorem. Suppose that little f is a continuous function on the closed interval a to b, and let big F of x be the Riemann integral from a to x of little f for all x in the interval a to b. Then the theorem tells you that the derivative of big F is equal to little f for all x in the interval a to b. Actually, it's good for a lot of things, thank you very much. So the language of the universe, as far as we can tell, is written in differential equations. Differential equations pop up all over the place. Physics, biology, chemistry, economics, you name it. And any time you want to solve a differential equation, you're implicitly using the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so that's the first part. What about the second part? So remember, the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus was about constructing antiderivatives. The second part is about computing integrals. All right, let's look at it. Suppose little f is a Riemann integral function on the closed interval a to b, and suppose that big F is a differentiable function on the closed interval a to b, such that the derivative of big F is equal to little f for all x in the interval a to b. Then the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus tells you that big F of b minus big F of a is equal to the Riemann integral from a to b of little f. Okay, so this is very important in computations. It's extremely difficult to compute Riemann integrals without using the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. That's why it's so fundamental. The fundamentals. All right, so when would we use the fundamental theorem of calculus? So let me give you an example. Suppose you want to compute the Riemann integral, say from uh, zero to one, of x e to the uh, x squared dx. All right, so you could try to use a Riemann sum, compute the limit, but that's gonna be a nightmare. Like, you should actually try to do it. You're gonna, you'll literally have nightmares. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll wake up sweating in the middle of the night, shivering, and you won't be able to go back to sleep, and then you're gonna have insomnia for like weeks and months, and like, it's gonna take over your life, and it's gonna be nuts, okay? But let's deal with the fundamental theorem of calculus. So remember, what do we have to do? We have to find an antiderivative of this function. So what is an antiderivative of this function? Well, you could use u substitution, and what you'll find is that an antiderivative of this function is, uh, is this function. Let f of x be equal to e to the x squared over 2. All right? 
then we differentiate this, you know, chain rule, all that good stuff. Then f prime of x is equal to x e to the x squared. All right? Therefore, therefore, here, I'll call this a little, a little smiley face because you're all very happy to be here. Then, this is equal to, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, f of one, remember this is the second fundamental theorem of calculus we're using, minus f of zero, which is equal to, if we plug that into here, e to the one squared over two minus e to the zero squared over two. One squared is just one, e to the zero is just one. So this is just equal to e over two minus one over two, or e, let me write this as e minus one divided by two, all right? So that's what it is. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so I hope all your minds are blown right now. If you have any questions, I'll answer all questions in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, share, comment, uh, hit the notification bell. Anyways, you know what to do. Yeah, if you know, you know, you know people are struggling with this, let them know about this channel. Maybe it'll help them out. Um, I'm taking suggestions or videos. So if you have any questions, any video requests, let me know. And I'm Professor Wolverine of Professor Wolverine Math, Physics, and Paradoxes on YouTube. And I'll see you next time.